Hi everybody. Uh, I thought I would uh, share something with you. Um, basically, a a voltage uh, circuit testing variable uh, when you're checking a uh, a motor circuit. Um, with motors, um, what can happen is if say if you get a bearing to bind up or uh, which would uh, cause the uh, shaft on the motor to slow down. It basically happen, what, the, what basically happens is the, uh, the counter electromotive force goes down on the motor. So it produces less back voltage. So then uh, when that happens, more current is able to go through the motor. Thus, when you have more current go through the motor, you have more of a voltage drop. So if you're testing a, a motor circuit, I don't care what type of motor it is, a blower motor circuit, starter motor, condenser motor, any, any type of motor, if you go up to the motor and say for example you go up right up to the load like I am on this little motor here that I'm going to show an example to, if you go up to a motor and it's like a, say it's like a 12 volt motor, and you're checking for voltage and it's not uh, what you're thinking the voltage should be it's not 12 say it's like 9 volts 8 volts well you there's some variables not only could yeah you could have a problem in either your positive or negative side of the circuit uh, you could have that problem but also you could have a problem with the motor the bearings could be going bad causing the shaft to not uh, causing the shaft to not to be able to turn fast enough. Okay, so less back voltage, then you're able to have more current flow through, and then uh, you have less resistance, Ohm's law, more current flow, and more current flow means more voltage drop. So I thought I'd just share this with you and give you a little demo uh, to help you notice this variable when you're testing this type of circuit. I think it'd be very useful. So what I did was um, I've got just a little 9 volt motor that I uh, got from Radio Shack. Got a voltmeter hooked up to it to the uh, positive and ground of it. And then I got a little switch here that I wired in. Then I, uh, for protection, <laughs> I took a piece of solder and put that in as the fuse for the circuit. I got that tip from uh, Dan Sullivan, so uh, I thought that was pretty neat. So, um, plus it saves money on fuses, which I like. Anyway, um, then what I did was to make sure that I was getting the proper amount of voltage uh, to that motor, since it's only a 9 volt motor, I used a potentiometer here, but I wired it up as a rheostat so I'll only get 9 volts going to the motor and uh, I was also able to adjust this uh, voltage with the load pro leads you can put a load on the uh, rheostat with it connected like you can put your positive lead here put the black lead to ground and then uh, push down on the tool the, or the uh, the load button to complete the circuit and then you can adjust the voltage you'll see it on your on your meter as you as you turn it um, I can show you that later but right now I want to show you what what you'll see in a motor circuit so anyway let me turn it on I'll turn the switch on and right now you can see that if you can the motors running and I got about 5.82 volts going to it. Let me see if I can adjust it back up to 9. Nope, oh, too much. There we go. I'm at 8.9 volts. So you can hear the speed. You can see the voltage uh, going to the motor. Now, watch uh, to the voltmeter as I put my finger on the shaft and slow the motor down
Okay, if you see there, the voltage dropped down because the the shaft stopped turning as fast, less back voltage, so then you're able to have more current flow through the motor. And then more current flowing uh, flowing through the motor creates more of a voltage drop. So there we go, then I got it back up to what it's supposed to be. Uh, but no, I thought I'd share that. I thought it'd be a good thing to know about. So if you, uh, I'm going to shut that off. So if you uh, go up to a motor circuit, say if um, the complaint is that the, uh, the blower's not turning as fast as it should be, well, here's what I think you should do when you're diagnosing that that type of fault. What you need to do is, uh, when you go to the blower circuit, turn it on high. Then take the low pro leads, disconnect the connector at the blower, okay? Check for voltage at the connector. If you have syst good system voltage, hit the button. If voltage doesn't drop a whole lot, circuit's good. Okay, then what you do is plug the motor back in and then back probe it. And then if the voltage like drops like substantially a lot more than what you got with your voltage drop on your load pro, it means your motor's bad. So um, that's just some that's a trick that I've learned over the years with that when you're diagnosing a motor circuit because the thing is. Um, with a motor, like I said before, if it slows down, uh, less back voltage, more current flow, more current flow means more voltage drop. So if you leave it, uh, the motor plugged into the circuit and you're testing for voltage and you notice that the voltage is way lower, then you're thinking, okay, I've got a couple variables here. You know, I either have resistance. I could have resistance in my positive side or I could have resistance in my ground side, which you could, and you'll have to make those checks. But another uh, thing to think about is if, you're, uh, if the voltage drop at the positive terminal of the motor is the same as the drop at the fuse connection to the motor, if it's exactly the same and the drop is the same, you know, also on the ground, then that's also another indication that your motor's going bad, okay? Um, like I said, that's a lot of extra steps, and uh, from my experience with using these, it's a lot faster. You just disconnect the connector at the load, load the circuit if it don't drop, and if you've got poor performance out of your motor, the motor's bad. You're done. You don't have to go all the way to the fuse and check there and then double check your uh, your ground. You don't have to do all of that. You don't have to do any of that. You just check at the load component, disconnect it. If it don't drop, you're good. Replace the motor. You're done. Um, and then uh, if you want to, you could also verify by uh, putting an amp clamp around the uh, one of the wires or an amp meter in series to the motor and check your current flow. Um, I do that too. But by using these leads in that process, it's a lot faster and a lot less time. I've done it a million times. It speeds up your diagnostic uh, a lot faster. So anyway, thought I'd show that uh, to you and uh, hopefully I'll have some more videos later. So Thanks a lot. Bye.